cataractcoach.com. Continual injection of viscoelastic. So using OVD to protect the cornea and the poster capsule for a real dense brunescent cataract. Let's watch our surgeon here. So tripan blue dye, getting the rexus done here. We've got a nice dense cataract. And as you know, when we do these dense cataracts, we're worried about too much ultrasonic energy in the endothelium and damaging the cornea, but also worried about that posterior capsule coming up. When you have a dense cataract, there's not a whole lot of cortex to weigh down the caps or bag here. So you can see there's a dense cataract, getting it nicely rotated, good hydro dissection done. And now starting off with some FACO here and now switching over to this ultra chopper. So this ultra chopper is a very sharp tip that can really penetrate into that. Notice there's no aspiration going on right now on the FACO tip. It's just this ultrasound and this sharp tip of the ultra chopper to go in there, followed by a regular horizontal chop. And this looks great. And so really splitting this nucleus up into nice manageable pieces here. And certainly if you have a very dense cataract like this, this ultra chopper is a very useful technique. And so now the cataract has been split up into many pieces. When we're emulsifying this, again, we want to protect the cornea and we want to protect that poster capsule. You've heard us say it here before, you know my saying, viscoelastic is cheaper than vitreous. Well, turns out viscoelastic is also cheaper than coronal endothelium. So using plenty of viscoelastic is probably a great idea here. Now with this brunescent cataract, you see it's still kind of attached. That's that fibrous or thick, dense, leathery posterior plate of the nucleus. So sometimes hard to really split these pieces. It's why you've seen videos of me in the past of tilting the nucleus out of the bag, getting the chopper on the back surface the posterior aspect of the nucleus, just to really get under there and get it separated out. And so here, surgeon's breaking it up into pieces, and now look at this. This was brilliant, I thought. Having a dispersive viscoelastic, maybe something inexpensive like HPMC, hydroxypropyl methylcellulose, or you could use a fancier viscoelastic, but just to recoat. And we've done the recoat before. But something I haven't done is just continual injection of viscoelastic during the removal of the last few pieces here of the nucleus. So again here, pieces coming up nicely. That retina back there saying, thank you, let there be light. So finally getting some light on that retina. There's gonna be a, you see a little peaks of that beautiful red reflex. And now taking down these pieces. And now I think he's gonna come in now with the injection of viscoelastic. There it is. And this I thought was brilliant too. So continuous injection of viscoelastic. So a little bit at a time, obviously small aliquots. You don't have to do a ton of it. Be careful, you don't want to fake a wound burn, you don't want the viscoelastic to clog up the tip there. But you're using this viscoelastic, injecting little aliquots at a time to help just kind of pre preserve that coronal endothelium, protect it, and then also getting behind this piece and injecting it behind the nucleus and in front of the posterior capsule. And then the chopper is now gone, but that viscoelastic cannula, that can be used as a second instrument, so you can do the same thing here. Now the tough part is if you're actually holding the left hand, that viscoelastic cannula, if you're holding that syringe, in a way that you can inject, it's maybe a little bit tougher to use. But here, again, using that second instrument, that cannula as the chopper, just breaking up the nuclear pieces here. And again, extra injection of viscoelastic, protecting the cornea and also going behind to protect the posterior capsule. So I wanted to show you this video because I just thought it was an interesting idea. Not something that I've tried on a routine basis to inject it continuously but it's may, something that I may want to consider for future cases here. So here at the end, remember, this is the part you got to be very careful. You don't want surge. Nice and easy. Slow down your parameters. Take the last pieces down nicely. Good chamber stability. Looking good. End of the case here. Here comes the lens going in the capsule bag. Yeah, the patient's going to be thrilled. What a beautiful outcome for this patient. So let me know. Have you tried a continuous injection of viscoelastic during a tough case like this? And if so, I mean, how many tubes did you go through? What's your material of choice? Is it HPMC, hydroxypropyl methylcellulose, or is it some other viscoelastic? And um, what was the outcome? And so I may try this for a future case, just probably a little small aliquots. For me, mostly you want to protect that corneal endothelium, produce a clear corneal post up day one, and but also, yeah, a little bit behind the nucleus just to keep that poster capsule away, keep it at bay so that we have a higher margin of safety.